Hi, my name is Yesenia Hanef, and I am a sophomore at Manila High School. I have a friend named Sarah. She is about the same age as I am. She is 16 years old. She has the cutest dog named Oreo and two adorable baby brothers. Sarah is a daughter, a sister, a friend, and one in seven million females in the United States suffering from an eating disorder. Sarah was diagnosed with anorexia nervosa at age 10. I remember playing the best games with her outside in her backyard. I mean, we would add the craziest twists and challenges to any game to make it as adventurous as possible. However, I slowly noticed some changes in Sarah. She wouldn't share pizza with us, or drink soda with us, or eat birthday cake at our parties. However, I have to be honest, I didn't really think much of it then, because we were only eight years old, and I didn't truly understand the toxic disease that Sarah was fighting. Yes, we were eight years old. Shortly after, I remember my mom telling me we wouldn't be able to hang out for a while. I later learned that during that time, Sarah had been hospitalized for weeks in a constant fight to stay alive. In that moment, I wanted to help my friend. I wanted to sympathize with her, and I wanted to free her from her illness. However, I quickly realized that eating disorders do not manifest in the same way. Some people, like my friend Sarah, see themselves as overweight, even when they are dangerously underweight. They suffer from anorexia. However, there are others with bulimia who suffer from episodes of binge eating, followed by behaviors to overcompensate for that eating, such as purging, fasting, or excessively exercising. And on an entirely different scale, those with binge eating disorder also have recurrent episodes of overeating. However, unlike a bulimic, they do not purge or fast or exercise thereafter, and so they often suffer from obesity or are overweight. So as it turned out, eating disorders can affect anyone, and the only thing connecting these victims is their need for help. When you have an eating disorder, you have obsessive thoughts about food. You feel the need to control your intake of food and feel guilty if you ever eat too much over your predetermined standards. You might even punish yourself for breaking these absurd food rules you've set by fasting or excessively exercising until you're weak to burn off any extra calories out of a fear of even gaining a fraction of a pound. So we've all heard of trendy diets, right? These diets become popular for a little while until a new one replaces them. However, what we don't realize is how polar opposite these diets actually are. For example, a keto diet recommends to have high fat and low carb foods, while a low fat diet says to have low fat and high carb foods. And this is just one example of how polar opposite these diets can actually be. So, it becomes clear that there is no rule book for your body. And so calorie counting should not be a rule book controlling a person's life. These deadly diets stem off existing insecurities and new pressures. A person susceptible to this disease might feel low self-esteem, dissatisfaction, or helplessness. They feel like in that moment, calories are the only thing that they can control. So they begin to use calorie counting as a rule book for their lives. However, quickly, the eating disorder begins to control them, and a deadly cycle of paranoia, restriction, and fear of overeating is set into motion that is extremely hard to escape. Eating disorders are proven to have detrimental damage to the body. They're associated with both physical and mental problems developing. Anemia and osteoporosis are possible, Damage to the heart and brain are possible, and these are just a few of the destructive effects an eating disorder can have on the body. Women with eating disorders often have irregular periods, if not ones that are completely absent, meaning that during this time, they are not able to conceive. The lack of ovulation each month is all a defense mechanism from their brain, which reverts back to a prepubescent hormonal state during extreme physical stress. 
So to all the females in this room, I want to ask, how can we be ashamed of the parts of a woman that are our biological right, that are not to be hidden, but celebrated, since they support the very foundation of human life? Unfortunately, my friend Sarah and I haven't been able to keep in touch since her hospitalization seven years ago. Anorexia took what we might consider a normal teenage experience away from her. It stripped her of her friends and her family. So it's imperative to remember that in the face of all the pressures you might have, you are enough. You are beautiful. Thank you.